grace and peace to you from our God, the Father in heaven, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Union Center and Wesley Methodist Church on this Ash Wednesday, the first day in Lent this year for us. So, thank you for being here with us for our in person 6 p.m. Ash Wednesday service. And thank you for those of you who are joining us online, our platforms like YouTube and Facebook as we having this worship service. On this night, we participate in a tradition that is nearly 100, no, 1,000 years old, which is Ash Wednesday. A day of a penitence that uses ash to mark the sign of the cross on the believer's forehead, like me today, symbolizing our sinful nature and need for salvation. The Palm Sunday branches often come from the previous year's Palm Sunday, so it's not today. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the Lenten season, which is a season of prayer, repentance, and forgiveness. So, as we get through this worship service, I will invite you to come forward for the imposition of ashes. If you would like to have the ashes on your forehead, please, you only need to lean forward slightly. And if you would prefer to have the cross on your hands, just place your hands out in front of me so I will know that one. If you would like to not have ashes at all, when you come forward, please, you will place your hands across your chest like this. Then I will offer, I will pray for you in silence instead of posing ashes on your hands or forehead. So with all of that, would you please bow our head and join me in prayer. O Lord, here we are again at the beginning of a season that backwards us to confront the condition of our condition. We pray for the strength and the courage, the wisdom to hear your word tonight through scripture, songs, and message, and the sign of the cross our forehead is. Put out your spirit on all of us as we gather here. Be with us, Christ. Be with us, churches everywhere who mark the beginning of this season that we might remember who we are, but more importantly, whose we are. All God's people say, Amen. And I encourage, I encourage you, as we are able to write for call to worship, and our first hymn, it is a number in the celebration five. 97 verse 1, 2, 4, 6. Would you please, as we say this, call to worship, if you are able. Call to worship. Listen to me. I am a child and you hear me. And return to me. Christ comes and you live. Return to me. Return to me. Christ comes and you turn toward the left, toward the right, toward God. Let's sing together our first hymn. Take my life and let it be. Let's sing together.
Our scripture reading this evening comes from first reading Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through 7 and 17 through 19. And the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. Amen. Amen. I was second reading from Joel chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And 12 to the 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priest whose minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord, do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is our God? Amen. Our second reading comes from Psalm chapter 51, verse 1 through 3 and 10 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy unfailing love, according to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Words of God, and thanks be to God. A special message from Eric.
Thank you, Rick. That's so beautiful music. Would you pray with me? My mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. For our Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Once more, I'd like to say thank you all of you to Ash Wednesday at 6 p.m. service. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I would like to welcome and bless all of you and you all family. I visually clear this time. And many things that have changed. Roads, buildings, over systems. And especially people have changed a lot. <laughs> My younger nephews and niece are what elementary students since I last I saw them. But now they have already become college students. And many people I knew have grown older. I realize how quickly time flies, right? However, the most impressive change I saw was none other than my younger brother-in-law. He became a faithful believer in awe of God who strictly keeps Sunday worships and begins and ends each day with prayer and reading the Bible, no matter how busy he was. He was not the same person that I used to know. Not only he was not a believer, but unlikely my older sister, she, he was skeptical about the life of faith and God. As a result, I was curious as to what happened to him. Then he showed me a picture of a plant alongside some ash nicely gathered in a box and said this, there are some reasons, but I can't deny that this was a huge reason that I became a Christian and also found God. My curiosity about the plant in the picture and the ashes was more and more. This is the plant named Rosemary. It originates from Mediterranean Sea and Southern Europe coasts like Portugal, Spain, Greece, and Italy zone. Can you imagine what the climate and environment is like? In such optimum conditions, the plant lives for about 50 years. My younger brother-in-law happened to receive rosemary as a gift and became interested and studied about this plant. Now his knowledge is beyond a hobby, and he is like an expert. He grew this plant alive for 30, 30 years in Korea. Whether, soil, whether, whether the soil and the climate are different, he felt proud that he was one of them who kept that plant alive for the longest time in Korea. He has become an influencer through online platforms. But one day, the plant began to wither. He tried to save it with all he could do. He gave it to a plant hospital and gave it to special treatments like this. But no matter how much he tried, about a month after it began to wither, it turned completely black and crumbled into ashes in a single moment. It was really in a single moment, he said. It was a moment so profound that it overshadowed the 30 years of leaving a sense of despair, realizing that all the effort, knowledge, an experience from over three decades couldn't revive or help the plant. Although he knew that everything is finite, he was struggled hard 
living to an acknowledgement of human limitation and a growing appreciation for the greatness of creation. It is interesting to me that as one feels closer to Christ, one may become more acutely aware of his or her limitations and sinfulness. So, what if one doesn't have this inward reflection and the realization? What if one doesn't have this inward reflection and re reflection and realization? They usually wouldn't, would not feel much remorse. That's why if you have come into this service with a feeling of inward reflection and remorse for human finite and the sins you have committed, that is a good thing. It says something about you and your characters. It says that you will realize your limitation and sinfulness, you are your need for confession, repentance, and forgiveness from our God. We could have, forg we could have forgotten or thought of the greatness of creation lightly in our busy daily lives. But one thing for sure is that we all return to soil, just like how we were first created. Thinking about this is a valuable time that we can reflect on in our lives and know more about our living God. Let's look at the Moses confession in Psalm 90. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you are mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grace of the morning. Blessed in the morning, in spring, up now, but by evening it, it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Twelve, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Just like Moses' confession, we can learn our finite and weakness, confess our pride and prejudice to, Lord, to the Lord when we meditate about God's greatness and forgiveness. Look at the world with an open heart, forgive and understand many others in our lives. Love each other and spend each moment in a worthwhile manner and have wisdom and be more relaxed so that we can love our lives. Therefore, this period gives us the most wise and precious time to reflect on ourselves throughout the year and to meditate about our Creator, the King of life. Through the scary, through the scary journey, through the journey of lantern, we can experience the joy and peace of resurrection, and making a precious time for all of us to receive the most valuable grace and forgiveness of sins. This Inward reflection is the first step in authentic repentance. Now it's the time to take the next step. It is a time to confess to God your finite, sinfulness, and to covenant with God that you are making a new beginning. And now it is our turn. There is a great therapeutic value as you receive the ashes upon your forehead of taking whatever burden of guilt you have been carrying 
and handing it over to our God. The scripture in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 tells us, Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen? When we bring our sin to God, acknowledging our guilty and finite, God will cleanse us of those sin and weakness, so we no longer are burdened by them. May this Ash Wednesday begin your journey through the land with Christ, and may you acknowledge your sins, feel your remorse for those sins, and you need for our God. May this land be a time for you to prepare for the forgiving power of Jesus' sacrifice on Good Friday and right through to the joy of Easter morning when the new life is celebrated. I wish and pray that Ash Wednesday, which is begins this period, gives you true comfort, peace, and this wisdom. Amen. Let us continue this Ash Wednesday service with our second song, Change My Heart, O oh God. Let's sing together. And now, would you join me in the invitation to the observations of a lantern discipline together? Almighty God, from the dust of the earth, you have created earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence. Let us remember that only by God's gracious gift are we given eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me? God created us, and may these ashes be for us a sign of your mortality and penitence 
Remember that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life through Jesus our Lord, Christ. Amen. Now I invite everyone that if you would like to have address on your phone, like I said, in your forehead, please just only need, just only need, you know, lean forward slightly. And if you would like to prefer to have a cross on your hand, please, please, and stretch your hands out in front of me, and I will know that one. And if you don't like to say anything, you know, on your head or hands, and on your head and hands, please, just like and you know, put your hands on your chest like this, right? I recognize that one, so you don't want to do this one anymore. So please now, I would like to invite all of you to this one. So, according to our tradition, as a sign of the cross is marked, it is a tradition for the ministry to refer to the words from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 by saying, Remember, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Right? But, come, come now and receive these ashes. Take the time and meditation, God's sacrifice for everyone on the cross in your silence. I encourage you as we are able to rise for our closing hymn number 345. I surrender all. Let's sing together.
Now go forth with this blessing and benediction. May the God of grace and glory God of the beginning in the end, the God of life and of death and resurrection, help you to see and know and believe that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, but dust isn't the end. In the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forevermore. Amen. May you go in peace. Amen.